All right, here we are. Another episode of Ascension with A Course in Miracles, and it is July the 12th, 2023. So many things are happening in the world. We are absolutely at a time when I, I don't know that I have been this excited ever. And the reason I'm so excited is because I absolutely know the amazing good that is coming to humanity because we have made a decision to wake up. When as a collective, we make a decision to wake up, we must face what had us be asleep. There's no way around it. There is only one way to awaken and it is to awaken inside of this, this dream of separation is to awaken by seeing what what had us be so totally, completely lost in the illusion of, of um, insanity. That is one of the things that the Course in Miracles has taught me, has helped me really understand is what does it mean to be asleep and insane? And it's so simple. Once you stand on the other side and you can look back, of course, as we know, the, the saying hindsight is twenty twenty. it makes perfect sense. To be asleep, to be lost in the illusion is to believe things that are not true. That That's all that it is. That is what the ego is. Excuse me. The ego is the collection of beliefs that block us from knowing the truth of who we are. When we are operating with those lies as if they are true, they create a state of total and complete delusion. If, if for example, if you are a... Let's say you are a little girl and you grow up and everybody tells you that you're a boy and you're given a boy name and you're told to do boy things, but you you really are a girl because that's that's your physicality. Well, it's going to create certain things in your mind. In the first couple of years, you won't even know that you are believing that you're a boy and it's not true because you don't know any different. You're an innocent child being indoctrinated into things that are not true. but. When you start going to gym class and you're in the bathroom and you're taking showers with all the other boys um, that are in there and you think you're a boy and your body looks different, it, it, it kind of throws you off. You begin to question, well, what, what's going on here? That's what humanity is going through. We are beginning to see where it's like we're in the bathroom, we're all naked and exposed and we're beginning to see you. My body doesn't look like your body. My beliefs don't look like your beliefs. My ideas don't look like your ideas. So that is causing us to, well, let me, let me divide us into three groups. As we have to understand as within, so without. So three groups of people, those who are who really wanna know the truth. Those who are comfortable in, in the illusion, because that's what they've known. They're safe in that and they don't really want to rock the boat, but they're, they're aware that something is off. And then there's the other group that is going to deny the illusion. They are denying that we even have different body parts. They are seeing the, the boys with the dinglings in the locker room and they know that they don't have one, but they are not going to acknowledge that there is something off because they're in total cognitive dissonance and they are not going to accept it. Well, when we use that analogy with, with the girl that grows up thinking she's a boy, if you are totally completely in denial, and if you're in cognitive dissonance and you're not going to accept that, you're gonna have a really hard time because as you get older and you are clearly a female, in a man's world, walking into, uh, let's say you get hired for a position and you say, I am, you walk in, yes, I am a man. People are going to start laughing at you. They're going to start making fun of you. They're going to, well, it's probably going to happen in school. But if as an adult, you're doing this, you, the only people that are going to agree with you are the ones who want something from you. Either they're too scared or they need you to do certain things, so they're going to leave you alone. Kind of like the emperor has no clothes. That kind of that story where in, in the, that children's story, nobody wanted to tell the emperor that he really was naked because they were afraid of him and they want to lose their jobs. So that's what happens to people who are just absolutely not going to acknowledge something's going on. 
So as within, so without, our own personal spiritual journey is the exact same thing. Individually, we have to go through a time where we are completely in denial of the, the truth because we are living out, experiencing the illusion. This, this, and we're in delusion about who we are because we think we're just humans and that that is something that we have to recognize. We are not just humans. As you move through this journey, if you go into that second tier, so think of it as beginner, intermediate, advanced. Beginner is in, it's in denial that, that anything is happening. So it's the same example with um, the analogy that I was using about the girl that grows up thinking she's a boy. In the beginning, you don't know. In the beginning stages, you just are operating inside. Oh, I'm just a human. This is all that there's to me. And I'm a separate human from everybody else. The intermediate, intermediate stage is when we begin to question. When we begin to go, okay, something looks different. Something feels different. You're reading self-help books, spiritual books. You're beginning to expand your awareness of maybe I am divine. Maybe there is more to me than just what I think, this human um, flesh and bones and density. Maybe there is more. And that stage is the, the stage that I call curiosity. You become curious about what else is there. Well, if you're going to advance to the next stage, you must at that point be committed to not only question everything, but to run everything through a new standard. So this new standard is, well, what if I am divine? What if I am non-physical? What if I'm made of pure energy? Well, on this side, you are beginning to, to open your mind up in a really big way. You're receiving information from what is beyond the known meaning you're you're receiving guidance you're receiving intuition you are tapping into much much more that is available to us because in reality when we operate from the ego we're operating from a fraction of truth a fraction of truth we're we're operating in this world and like the girl who grows up with uh, thinking she's a boy she's there's still truth there she's still a human. She is still having an experience um, as an individual person. She still has whatever name she's been given. She still has her own room. She's clean. She eats. She goes to the bathroom. There are truths to what she's experiencing, but her mind is conditioned to think uh, that she's a girl instead of a boy, but she's still a human. So there's truth there. So we're ap operating with a fraction of truth. Use my chart as an example. This is the, the total delusion. You don't know who you are, but there is some truth in there. This is the stage when we are in intermediate, where we're becoming curious. We're crossing the line from what we thought was true to what could possibly be true. But when you move to the top of that cone, which is really a spiral, what happens is you're tapping into information that's beyond beyond what you could conceive as a human because you're tapping into your non-physical true nature. So when we study A Course in Miracles, A Course in Miracles wants us to understand how did the mind get conditioned to fall asleep? So you have to be able to analyze that beginning stage where you're a child, you grow up with information. Most of it is misinformation, that there's something wrong with you, that, that the world should operate with divisiveness, that we should have um, hierarchies, governments, that people know better than you do, that you should send your money to those people to run the world and they get to make decisions, including going to war and killing people that maybe it's not doesn't feel right to you for your hard-earned money to go to support things like that. So we have to understand how did we fall into this idea that I'm just a human and I'm separate and it's okay for me to hurt others and it's okay for others to hurt me. So, or it's okay for me to hurt myself. So it depends on, I mean, there's so many ways that we have been deluded. So we have to be willing to look at how that stage got created 
to begin with because it is a co-creation. We have to agree to play the roles of victim and bullies. Somebody has to willingly agree to play the role at the top of the, the hierarchy and somebody has to agree to play the roles at the bottom of the hierarchy and everything in between. So we are waking up. My excitement is that there are more people, more and more and more are moving into that middle section of curiosity because they're looking at what's happening in the outer world and saying that this doesn't make sense. We're beginning to be, be startled out of our sleep. How can these people that we have given so much power to, be they heads of corporations because we support them, how do you think they get all that power and that money? We buy their products. How do you think the government gets all that power and money? We, we vote for them. Or, and this is something we have to face, we think we vote for somebody else, but those people that may not necessarily have all the votes are still winning. How does this happen? Well, we're beginning to see that there's corruption everywhere because when the eagle runs the show, the eagle is a corrupted software. That's what it is. It's a software. It's a, you can call it a virus. You can call it whatever you want to call it. It is a block to truth. So when you're believing things that are not true, for example, that you are not smart enough to question the government or smart enough to, um, to make the millions of dollars that a CEO should get, when you begin to question why, why is it that things that are logical to me, to most average person, are so illogical, and yet they tell me that this is the way things should be. For example, when we look back to what happened during the pandemic, and people were being told, oh, it's like almost overnight, around the world, we had the signage um, that told you how to stand six feet apart, how, the, about information about having to wear the mask, that you couldn't, uh, you had to isolate, you had to social distance. It's like around the world, something that had never happened before. We had never had a global pandemic in the time of the information age, but yet in lockstep, everybody in every country was saying the exact same thing, had the exact same images. It's, it's like, maybe was it planned? Was it actually a pandemic, as some of the documentaries are called? Well, when we begin to get curious, we have to begin to face that we have been believing information that was not necessarily um, true. And when we don't know the truth, we get put in bondage. This is why the truth sets us free, because the lies put us in bondage. The lies make us afraid, make us feel small make us feel that we need somebody to protect us. That's what we've been studying in, in this, this section. We're still in chapter 30. The title of chapter 30 is The New Beginning. And it's a new beginning for those who got curious and want to move beyond the lies. To move beyond the lies, you have to face the liars. That's what this section is. Section number three, Beyond All Idols. All idols are those who participate willingly because we have to volunteer for this this uh stuff to become an idol to become one that gets worshipped to believe that i'm better than others to believe that i deserve more than others to believe that somehow i know more and better than you that i get to be right and you get to be wrong and then these people move into positions of leadership of power because those of us who idolize them give them that status. Well, part of waking up, the only way to, to go beyond an idol is to see our participation in, in idol worship, to see how it is that we got um, manipulated into, because a lot of it has been manipulation of unconscious people. But we, as long as we are not curious, then we are totally, completely ignorant. When we begin to get curious, we begin to see the lies and the truths. Now we get to make a choice. This is part of the journey that is very uncomfortable for people. And it's called the, 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 the part of personal responsibility. Once you see lies and truths side by side, you can call it uh, darkness and, and light. You can call it evil and good. You can call it fear or, or love. It doesn't matter what we call it. 
there is a contrast. And once you have been curious enough and you begin to understand the true nature of who we all are, divine beings having a human experience, once you begin to cultivate a relationship with your creative source, once you begin to tap into the more of what you are that exists beyond your conscious awareness, because that is really truly the truth that sets us free. We're divine beings. We need to get to the place that we understand not only that we're divine, but the power inherent in that divinity, because we need to access that to allow us to then go to that third stage where now we know the truth and it has set us free to then collectively co-create a world that operates on truth. So again, let me talk about those three stages, the stage of total ignorance. You're lost in the illusion. This is often known as the, um, the, the, well, in, in spiritual speaks, this is the, the illusion. You are asleep. The second stage is the intermediate stage. You're getting curious. You're questioning. Your mind is getting opened up to other possibilities. You might be feeling, experiencing connections to source, intuitive knowingness. You Things are, are synchronistically guiding you to read this book or to go to that event or participate in something that begins to expand your mind. But you're still believing that what you've been taught is true. So you have two thought systems in your mind now, and you are clear that they are very different and very distinct. Once you decide that only one is true, then you move to that third stage. The third stage, which I would call the advanced stage, which I would call the when you really are in, in the process of diligently waking up. See, the awakening begins and you don't even know that you're awakening. You have no idea you've been asleep. You're just gathering information and it feels good and it feels wonderful. It feels expansive. It, you like being in that club. These people are nice. They're joyful. They're happy. They're talking about, um, you know, transcendence and, and enlightenment. It sounds so wonderful, but you have no idea you're asleep because you haven't studied your ego. When you move into the state of being awake, you not only know your ego, but you are deliberately committed to transcending it. That takes an incredible amount of work because you must let go of everything that you have learned to idolize. And the main thing that we learn to idolize is our false self. To be able to move to that stage where you are absolutely, completely determined to only follow God's laws, first, you have to know that God is love. First, you have to know that you are God. God is energy and everything is made of energy. Your mind can no longer operate in idols, in hierarchy, you know, God up there and me down here. Once you begin to understand the truth of who you are, if you are really in the, in the throes of waking up, you realize the equality of everything, the oneness, nothing can be higher or lower, no hierarchy, no idols no victims. From that place, you begin to access the truth of who you are. It's like you open the door to receiving more of who you are. You open the door to accepting how powerful you are. So those stories in the beginning that have you believe that if you're a girl, you know, this idea that you could be a boy, you're no longer um, gullible in that way because you have tapped into the source of truth that you are connected to. And we call that intuition. We call that gut instinct. But it is a very distinct knowingness of that truth, because when you hear it, you feel peace, you feel certainty, you're going to do it no matter what. You are going to be a rebel no matter what in a world filled of, with sleepers. You begin to follow the guidance of absolutely only Treat all beings as equal because you understand, as it is stated in, in our Declaration of Independence, that all men, women are equal. There are no idols in equality. In equality, we have different roles that we play, but every role serves the greater good. Well, when you begin to think that way, to realize, well, we are one, 
We are equals. We are, then comes the work of communication. You've got to learn how to talk to one another because victims speak from a very uh, muffled place. They've, they've blocked their throat chakra. They don't speak their truth. And bullies uh, speak as if they get to decide for everybody else. And they use a very loud voice and they, they make up stories to uh, support their status. Whether they're true or not, it doesn't matter to them. As long as they are talking and they've got the microphone and they've got the ability to cancel out everybody else, then they feel okay. Well, if you're going to wake up, you've got to recognize those two voices. How are you going to realize those two voices unless you recognize them within yourself? That's why the journey that A Course in Miracles takes us on is called a journey in, in mind training. you got to understand, train yourself in understanding how your mind got programmed. How do I speak as a victim? How do I speak as a bully? Where did these things come from? When did they start? We've got to go to the beginning of our journey. Mother, father, train us into believing things that are true or not true. We've got to go there. We've, and that's very uncomfortable to question what your parents told you because we have so much love and reverence for our parents or such disdain for what they did that we, we don't even want to acknowledge that they could have been wrong and made mistakes because if we are blaming them for all of our problems, we don't want to give them any grace. So there's a lot of work that goes into the process of waking up. So when, we, when we're looking at something like A Course in Miracles and we are understanding, as it tells us here beyond all, all idols, we are being told very clearly that to believe in idols is to say, it is like saying to the universe, I'm, I only want this limited amount of information. I only want to trust what this movie star says or this sports authority says or this government official says or this head of the the medical, scientific, whatever. I, I only want to hear what they have to say. And this is what it says in, in the course. It's as if you said, I have no need of everything. I'm going to settle for these idols, this tiny little blip here. I don't want everything else that possibly could be true. I am going to say no to all of that. This is my truth. That is being asleep. Is to give all your power to a very finite amount of information, most of it incorrect. That's the, the pure definition of being asleep. In the illusion, as the Course in Miracles calls it, believing only what your ego has to say. Then you have to go through the bridge. How did I learn to believe in idols? Who taught me about idols? Why do I worship idols? As within, so without. What does that idol represent? We've got to look at what are we projecting out there. So Course in Miracles is a course in not only mind training, but it's a self-study course. Nobody can teach you A Course in Miracles and tell you this is what it is. Have you take a test and say, oh yeah, you passed. It is absolutely something that you must do on your own and you must become brutally honest with yourself because if you discover the truth that sets you free, you can't go around and operate from the lies that keep you asleep. So you've got to, to really get honest when do you believe that you are a body, that you are just a human, that you are finite, that you are just a man or just a woman, that or that you are a combination of the two? When when do you believe that you are LGBTQ, LMNLP, um, plus and all those other things? And that is what you identify yourself with because none of that is true. You are the energy, the intelligence, the power behind all of that. And of course, when you tap into source, when you are connected to source, you are connected to the truth that sets you free because it helps you understand your infinite connection, not only to everything, but your infinite connection to God, which means if all of us are energy, if everything is energy, then you are made of what God is made of, which is the same energy. And then you understand that it is loving, that it is peaceful, that it is creative, that it is caring, that it is expanding and expressive. Then you've got to embody those characteristics. 
You've got to let yourself um, tap into that creativity. And guess what? We've all heard insanity is doing the same thing, expecting a different result. Well, when we are asleep, we just do the same things. We follow the same process. We pay our, you know, we go to work. We work really hard. We have a bunch of our money withheld. We pay our taxes. Our money goes somewhere that does things that we, most of us don't even know really what, what it is. Um, the, the wars that we're funding, why are we funding them? Who gets the money? How does this get divided? I just recently saw um, a, a one of those, um, what do you call them? They were bringing people into Congress and they had all these interviews and they were doing a hearing of some sort. And this person, this, this uh, journalist doing real journalism had gone on to look at where is all the money that is going to the Ukraine? Well, who's getting it? How is this being allocated? And some of the things that he was saying, he said, you know, as a citizen paying your taxes, you you should be appalled that your money is going to this person, to that thing. Nothing that has to do with what the public has been told is where the monies are going. So as you become more aware of who you are and you really recognize that we are here um, as consciousness expressing itself to extend love, to extend kindness, collaboration, co-creation, and you are hearing things that are not true, why does every single president that we have had that takes us to war, why do they fund things that we as citizens have really no idea about? Well, we'll keep doing the same thing, expecting a different result. Like they're going to tell us the truth, like they're going to be accountable to where these monies go. A lot of people don't want to see those things because those who are asleep, do not want to face the very things that keep them ignorant because to first wake up, begin the process of awakening, you must acknowledge that you have been asleep. You must acknowledge that you have been ignorant. You didn't know what you didn't know. And that is a very empowering thing to one who is moving further down the journey because when you can say, I did not know that I did not know so many things. I did not know that I was being lied to. I did not know that I was supporting causes that were actually uh, malevolent. They had outcomes planned that were not loving. That's what the Course in Miracles is helping us see. When somebody worships their egoic mind instead of God's mind, God's knowingness, they are going to do dark and dreary things because the ego is selfish. It's all about me. It's all about take care of me, protect me because I don't believe I have power. I idolize something external to have more power over me. So when you say this is what is true, you're saying no to everything else. You are saying no to infinite possibilities. Now, why do our minds get so stuck in needing to be right and defending things that are not true, limited, that are not that are not loving? Because we all get, get conditioned with rewards and punishments. And we do not like punishment. And to the ego, not being right is a punishment. Being right is the reward. Oh, yes, I'm right. I, I, I know this. So we have to go through a process of training our mind move out of thinking just rewards and punishments and add another possibility. Well, there's the reward because I got it right. There's the punishment if I get it wrong. But what about curiosity? What if I'm expanding? What if it's not right or wrong? What if there's more to this? That requires an incredible amount of, of maturity. So the beginning stages, the middle stages, the advanced stages of the awakening process mean this is like elementary school. This is like middle school. This is like high school. At some point, we need to graduate from middle school, but we also first need to graduate from elementary school so that we can go to the next level. Once you acknowledge that you don't know it all, curiosity becomes not only fun, but it becomes an easy part of your journey. You meet anything and everything that happens with a, I don't know what this is for. And God, I wonder what you want me to do with this. We begin to cultivate a relationship with the creative source that begins to give us more of the information that is not access accessible 
when we're defending a finite idea, not only of what we know, but of who we think we are. That's why I use the cone that's really looks like a cone here, but it's really a spiral. We are expanding and ascending. We're moving to a higher, higher perspective of seeing things. But that only happens with curiosity. So back to why I'm so excited about what is happening is many more in humanity are getting curious. And when people get curious and begin to discover the truth that sets us free, and then we come together because we are transcending the egoic selfishness and we're moving more to a collective, we got to work in unity. What begins to happen is collaboration. Well, first communication, we start communicating with one another instead of attacking. I'm right. You're wrong. You know, I should be rewarded. You should be punished. We're going to punish you and take your your social media way. We're going to punish you and block your YouTube channel. We're going to punish you um, because you're saying things that we don't like. How can anybody say that somebody is speaking lies, especially when millions agree with that? Wouldn't you think that a mature person would get curious? Let me hear what you have to say. Show me your evidence. That's perfectly okay. Show me your evidence. Show me where you came up with this. But this entire entitled thing um, that has happened where so many have been silenced that are beginning to get curious about the, the, the whole pandemic. You know, why is this happening? I'm getting curious about the symptoms, getting curious about the treatments. Every person, every doctor, every everybody who is bringing information that was contrary to what the idols were telling us, those people were punished. Their voices were silenced. Well, when you begin to have maturity, spiritual maturity, and you're no longer invested in just being right, you can look at this and go, something's off. Then you want to do research. You want to expand your, your awareness, meaning you are still going to stay curious. And then you get to contrast between the two. Those who are graduating not only can see the distinction between what is of the ego, what is of God, but they have made a decision. They are diligently only allowing themselves to believe and, and walk the talk. So take action in what is supportive of the truth that sets all of us free. Not only for yourselves, but you set free those who want to continue to believe in illusions, those who want to continue, you let you set them free. You, you can do that, but we're going to do this. So the world is bifurcating. We are creating basically two camps and it's okay. There's the side that is for the truth, the side that still operates in illusion. These people don't know the majority of the ones who are operating in this, this, they don't even know that they're asleep. They really don't. So we've got to give them grace. Then there's a good chunk in the middle that grows by the day that is getting curious and curious and are willing to look at both sides are willing to enter into dialogue, are willing to, to say, maybe maybe I was wrong. That is the beginning stages of maturity. Maybe I am wrong, because guess what? We have been. We've been operating with indoctrination that is all lies. If you believe that you're just a human, if you believe that you are a body, if you believe that money is what keeps you safe, protected, that money is what gives you a sense of worth, because it's attached to your net worth. If you believe that that's who you are, then you are still asleep. If you are open to the possibility that you are also non-physical, that you are more than your body, that you're, you're the energy that animates that body, that you actually, what you really truly are is that which dissipates when the body expires. You can go to any funeral home, see all kinds of bodies laying there. None of them are moving, are they? Well, what is what? Why are they not being animated? Because the life force is not in them anymore. So why are you worshiping a body that in and of itself has no power instead of the life force that powers it? Well, if you are waking up, that is what you're wanting to learn more about. That's what you are studying. That's what you are committed to learning about, but you have to be honest about the, the fact that you know truth, but you still operate from illusion. 
because that is where we begin to take responsibility to little by little by little move out of the illusion and into the, the truth that sets us free. So let's continue here. Paragraph number four. So it never is the idol that you want. You will never be happy. We've already talked about this before. The idol is a limitation. It is, it, it has by uh, its nature has hierarchy, has rights and wrongs, has haves and have nots. So the idol is not really what you want. And the, the person that you want to get married, that's not really what you want, that you idolize as, as the one that's going to make you happy. What you want is the feeling, the experience of the joy that comes from the connection with a partner, the job where you get to express yourself, the, the money that you are looking for is for the safety, the, the ability to have the things that, that make you comfortable, you're, that's what you're looking for. But we've been taught to idolize the, the partner, the boss, the money, the, all of these things that are material. Of course, the miracles wants us to create a relationship with the content, not the form, but the content, the essence, the energy that is there. Because once we begin to talk about why do we want, why, what does anybody, what does anybody needing to be more than a billionaire, be a trillionaire. Why? Because they're looking for power. Well, they're looking for uh, to to be, for level of control, for a level of safety, just as much as the person needing the, the job that pays minimum wage, looking for the same thing. If we talked about what is the same thing that we're looking for, we would all see that we're looking for a, a way to feel connected, a way to feel safe, a way to feel loved. Well, let's go straight to that. L leave out the idols. The idols are not what we want. What we want is what we think the idol provides. Then it says, but what you think it offers you, the idol, you want indeed and have the right to ask for. You have the right to ask for, for a raise. You have the right to ask for a promotion, for um for a partnership with somebody that that honors you you have every right to do that um because that's what you think it's going to it's going to that's the source of it nor could it be possible that it be denied you deserve everything you are entitled to miracles so you absolutely deserve everything that your heart desires your will to be complete is but god's will and this is given you by being his. This is the work of mastery. This is when you begin to, you, you can't come to know what God desires for you while you're busy trying to accumulate what you desire for you based on your ego. While your ego is trying just to get by, you cannot, you, you don't have the bandwidth to listen to God's mind. That's why so many people go through a major life change. This is known as the dark night of the soul where you literally are brought down to your knees and you have to say, there's got to be another way. When that happens, you begin to understand God's will. You begin to get curious about God's will because you realize, well, my will hasn't gotten me very far now, has it? Once you are comfortable questioning your righteousness, then you open yourself up to what is possible from God's perspective. And of course, we all have to go through the process of purifying our minds, meaning letting go of all the lies that we've been taught about God, that God is a male on a cloud somewhere that we've been idolizing and it likes you or it doesn't like you. And depending on its mood, it's going to uh, you know, rain fire and brimstone on you. It's going to turn you into pillars of salt. Um, so our mind was basically indoctrinated with lies about God. So we've got to understand the truth about God. And when you move down this spiritual path, you begin to realize the truth that sets you free. God is energy. It is not a man on a cloud. It's not a woman on a cloud. God is pure energy, is the life force that animates the body. It's what leaves the body when we hear of people who have near-death experiences and they hover above their body. It's the life force that is not only intelligent, it is creative. But it is connected to everything else. You can't divide uh, life force energy. You, you, you can't sort it out. And you can't go to the store and buy a can of life force. 
you have it because God is is in you when you are born you are an aspect of God expressing itself uniquely as you so we have to learn all of these truths we have to remember all of these truths and when you begin to realize that the will of God is for you to be happy and you realize wow that's what God wants for me is to be happy how does that happen well if you don't want to really go in depth into the teachings that are more esoteric in nature, go to the Constitution, go to the Bill of Rights. All men are created equal, all of us, endowed by God with the same inalienable rights. You, the, and these rights are to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Life, you have eternal life. Nobody should snuff your life. Nobody should control your life. You have liberty, meaning nobody should tell you what to do. You should be free to express yourself, experience what you want to, but so does everybody else. So how do we have people who censor what people say? Well, if you have liberty, you should say whatever you want to say. And when you are connected to the truth of who you are and you operate under these principles, you're gonna be happy. Happy people don't listen to nonsense. Happy people don't waste their time with low vibrating frequency, which is lies. So if anybody can say what they want to say, and we don't have a censoring system, those who are connected to source are doing God's will, they're being happy, can feel the resonance of truth versus lies and will not support what is not true. So we're seeing so much more now, uh, people becoming aware that we have companies who are promoting things that are lies. So what do you do? Doesn't feel right. You don't need to um, go censor that company. You just don't provide your funds to it. You just don't support them. You don't um, become a patron of whatever it is that they offer. So in a world of freedom, well, they can fall of their own free will. If they want to promote that, then maybe they'll have less people but they can still promote that and they will attract those who vibe at that frequency. And that's okay. Just because somebody achieves a certain status, a certain position, a certain money level of a company doesn't mean that they're, they're too big to fail. It, that should not be the, the way that anything is done because then you have to manipulate things to protect somebody. But when we move into all men are created, all men and women are created equal and you tap into the life that you are, which is eternal life, the life that that um, is animated by the God uh, presence, by the, the life force that you really truly are. Once you begin to cultivate a relationship with that and not think that you're just your name, you're just your body, you're just your ethnicity, your culture, your status, you begin to tap into something that is universal. And as we operate from that universal place in liberty, everybody that does becomes happier because you become free. The truth sets us free to be who we are. But the world is bifurcating and those who like to control because, well, they need sleepers to be able to control them. Why, why would anybody control? It's not possible to control somebody who's awake. As a matter of fact, those are the people that are uncontrollable and they're a pain in the ass to the establishment, to the idols. They cannot handle people who say, I'm listening to God and I'm free. That's why they crucify people who do things like that. That's why they send them to, to prison. That's why they want to banish them. If you look around, so many of the people who go against the establishment and they end up being in prison, it's because those with the power to imprison them want them out of the way so that they won't inspire other minds to question things. Course in Miracles is a course in mind training. If you Come back to your to your true mind. If you take 100% responsibility for what you're thinking and you're thinking with God, God wills for you to be free. And if you follow that, then you will accept the will that has been given to you by God. And then you will realize you and God are one. God is the energy that animated your physical vessel and wants you to be free so why not want to know what God would desire for you once you are free? It's very simple. It's going to want for you 
to move beyond the 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 spiral to go outside of the on uh, of the known stop doing the same thing expecting different results go to a whole new way of being connect with a whole new way of doing things it is unknown so you got to stay curious you cannot be right about what you know and enter the kingdom of heaven it is not possible because the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God, whatever you want to call it, nirvana, the fifth dimension, sixth dimension, it doesn't matter what you call it. To enter into a realm of expansion, how the heck can you know what that's going to be like if you're sitting here defending what you do know? So your will to be complete, completely you and authentic you is but God's will for you. And this is given to you by being God's will that you be free. So God created us to be free. If we accept that that's what God wants for us now, <laughs> now we're closer to being free because God knows not form. God is not physicality. God is what animates it. God is the energy in the rock. God is the energy in the tree. God is the, the life force in everything that you see, not the external. What have we been so distracted with? I know I have been, I still to this day, I'm distracted with it, is focusing on our form, on looking good, on having the right hair color, the right lipstick, the right outfit, the right um, place to live, the right car, the right this, the right that, you know, this is my favorite color. I don't like those other colors. We have been taught to care so much about our physical form, about what others think about our physical form, how we look, that we have stopped uh, really connecting to the content and to connect to that content is to connect with that which sets us free children learn to care about how they look and because their parents make sure that they wear certain things I know I grew up in a very very formal kind of an environment and I was taught from a very young age what was appropriate what wasn't the right outfits what goes with what and my gosh, if you ever put on the wrong outfit, you would feel terrible. You failed. You did it wrong. You should be punished. Um, so there's a lot. There's a lot that we are undoing that is not God's will at all. Now, God, God's will is that you be free. That's why we were created free, free enough to put ourselves in bondage. But in bondage, once you realize this doesn't feel good, your will is to get out of bondage. Your will is to come out of being asleep and begin the process of curiosity to then eventually awaken. So God doesn't know form. So our mind is being trained to move our allegiance from the physical, the body, to the non-physical, the soul. We have to shift to understand that every one of us is soul. So why would you idolize somebody when they're a soul just like you? If they're just a soul, why do you give them more power? Why do they think they have more power over you? Well, if you are operating as a human and you believe that you are less than, that you don't have as much, that you're not as intelligent, then you will succumb to that lower level victimization where you get to basically be controlled by those who have trained you into thinking that you're less than. That's why you have to create a relationship with the truth of who you are so that you can begin to bring that online, to, to activate the truth that is already in you, because it's in our DNA. It's in our, there's no junk DNA in any one of us. There's pure intelligence that hasn't been tapped, in, tapped into because we've been conditioned. Our mind was trained into believing lies. For our mind to be trained into believing truth, you have got to get curious. How can you know beyond what you already know if you don't get curious and believe that there is more than what you know? That's why you can't be righteous and be curious. Curious people know to be right is, is like the, 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 to put yourself in a box. This is what I'm right about. Then everything outside of the box, no, no, that's wrong. That's arrogance. <laughs> the ignorant are arrogant because they defend a very <clears throat> small idea. I know I experienced my ignorance and my arrogance. So God, God doesn't know form. God is infinite energy, animating, expressing, expanding. He cannot answer you in terms that have no meaning. So when you go to God, oh God, give me more money. You know, give me that job. Give me a lover. That's meaningless to God because God doesn't know physicality, doesn't know form, doesn't know money. But 
God, I want a connection with another partner. I want to experience feeling safe. I want to experience freedom. God will answer that because that is the voice for God known as the Holy Spirit, intuition, gut feel, whatever you want to call it, that will inspire you because it's creative, always taking you out of the known to be able to open up to what God wants for you, which is what you want for you, by the way. You can't be doing the same thing, expecting a different result. You can't continue to try and find a person to make you feel happy, to, to get stuff to make you feel safe. It will not bring that to you because if that's what you're looking for, you're also participating in the game of manipulation. Whoever gives that to you now has power over you. So we have got to get really clear about so many things, so many things that have been used against us so not to go around feeling like a victim. Oh my God, I've been abused. Yes, but you didn't know that that was happening. We, we've got to forgive ourselves for not knowing what we were doing. Be gentle and begin to activate that loving presence of God that says, okay, now I see this is not necessarily my best interest. I want to do things differently. Now we begin to move in the direction of what will set us free. And your will could not be satisfied with empty forms made, but to fill a gap that is not there. Our mind has been conditioned to believe that we are broken. We There's not enough. We're small. We're less than. And we got to keep finding things to fill it. But see, the truth is that nothing external is going to fill you. If it was why the first husband, the first wife would have been enough. <clears throat> why do we have multiple marriages? Why, why do we have to keep finding somebody else? We would just be happily ever after, ever now with that one. That job that you got would have been enough. That amount of money would have been enough. The first million would have been enough. The first house, the first car, all of that would have been enough. But why is it never enough? Because the mind is conditioned in getting more in, in this gives me what I need now, but there's a hole that I got to fill. So I need more. That's not true. There is not a gap in you. There's not a hole in you. You are actually whole with a W. You are whole and complete. Your worth, the W of wholeness, your worth comes because that is how God created you. Your mind got trained into forgetting. So creation gives no separate person and no separate thing the power to complete the son of God, the daughter of God. God makes each and every one of us complete because we are all made completely of the life force that is God. Intelligent, creative, expressive, extending, knows that it is one with everything. That's why it has no issues with anyone. That is the truth of who we are. That is what we are tapping uh, into within ourselves. So this is a journey that you've got to go inside, sort out your two thought systems, what was given to you through indoctrination and domestication and programming, whatever you want to call it, to make you fall into the lower realms that makes you need an idol. So if you want to move beyond idols, you've got to accept the power that is within you to stop giving your power to others when the power that is in you just needs to come online. Tap into your own inner resources, which of course the idols don't want you to. They don't want you to be healthy. They don't want you to experience joy and peace and to be satisfied with what you have. They want to keep you confused and always searching, searching like you know it's, it's never ending. That's why we have to stop at some point seeking and start accepting what is already whole and present within us. So what idol can be called upon to give the son of God what he, she already has? Nothing out there can give you what you already have. That's why this journey of understanding our mind, understanding our thoughts, what we believe, because they are creating a reality. If you believe you're less than, you're going to keep seeking. If you believe you don't have enough, you're going to keep seeking. If you believe that you're broken, you're going to keep trying to fix yourself. When you already have everything given to you by your creator, because your creator is the very life force that animates you. This is why when God, Jesus told us, 
I and the Father are one, Jesus discover within him the Father, the Mother, the energy, the life force, the truth of who he is. That is known as Christ consciousness, the acceptance of the truth of who we are, which ends, of course, all of the ignorant information that we had as an immature information of worshiping anything outside of us. Waking up requires that we take responsibility for acknowledging that we don't know what we don't know. Move into the seeker position, get curious, begin to learn. As you learn, you begin to discover that there are two ways of doing things. Once you choose only the one and you acknowledge the truth of who you are, then you are diligent about only wanting to know God's truth for you. But here's the kicker. When you move down that path of acknowledging your truth, you begin to acknowledge it for everybody else. That is where you realize all, all men are created equal. All women are created equal. You don't want to participate in special groups that give this group right over that group. You go, we all have the same rights. That's when you begin to realize that there is a power in you that heals you. You don't need to buy into external things that make other people money um, that you have to do, even if you don't want to do it to keep a job. You realize, no, I have a power in me that heals me. You begin to understand that there is the ability through this transition for us to collaborate, co-create, yes, with doctors and lawyers and, and teachers and, and even preachers, that are all operating with one common goal, which is to discover the truth that sets us free. And they don't want you, they do not want you because they know it's not good for them to stay ignorant. They want to inform. And we are moving out of believing that the physical form is the truth while we become informed by the content, the energy that animates us as our true reality. So this is quite the journey, isn't it? This is quite the process of re retraining our minds to think truth instead of lies, to move into the realm of expansion instead of contraction. And this is episode 113. My God, goodness, 113 of these conversations. I just so love it. If you feel like sharing any nuggets that you might have gotten from this call, by all means, please unmute yourself. If not, as always, next Wednesday, 12 o'clock Eastern time, I record these. So we put them online on my YouTube, Line Orlando. You have access to them at any time because I love sharing the truth that sets us free. It set me free and I want you to have that experience if you're curious enough and willing to acknowledge you didn't know what you didn't know. This sounds like something that stretches you. Come learn with us and we move through uh, the ascension process together by utilizing A Course in Miracles. That's why this is called Ascension with A Course in Miracles. Ascension is basically expansion out of limitation. Thank you so much for being here. So grateful. You guys have a wonderful rest of your day. Awesome. I'm getting, <laughs> what did you just write here, sweetie? This is so precious. Awesome. I'm getting free with you. Absolutely. We're getting free together here. Um, love you all so much. If you enjoyed this, share it. Post this on your social media and let others know about it. Don't hold it to yourself. Love you all. Take care. Bye-bye.